Hello everybody, Dan PCV, the criminal violin here. This is going to be a completely different video than normal. This is going to be more of a, a newsy-ish, vlog-ish sort of thing. I really wanted and felt like I needed to do this um, just to give some insight and some light into things and stuff. And uh, yeah, talk about a very nationwide situation you could argue in terms of the quote-unquote not my president protests as they're called, which is they also known as the anti-Trump protests. Um, yeah, so basically, in Portland, we've, uh, ever since uh, the day after election of him, there's been good few thousand people that are gathering every every day, specifically around 5 o'clock after people are getting off work, of course, you know, to go and start marching and protesting uh, Donald Trump, and... Um, Every single one of them have been peaceful. In fact, they've been smiling and laughing, a large majority of them, which actually is pissing off a lot of pro-Trump supporters. They're actually getting mad simply because, hey, people are protesting. And then there also there's even some more of them, like I said, they're getting mad simply, rather than just because they're protesting, which is apparently a good enough reason to start whining, complaining, stamping your feet like a four-year-old, they're also doing this and grumbling and griping and whining and bitching and complaining about the fact that, hey, these protesters happen to be smiling and are laughing and enjoying themselves. That's sickening. And it's like, so basically, it's a, no matter what, they're going to make sure that it's a lose-lose for everybody's situation. They want it only to be a loss. In their mind, everything has to be a blockade. Everything has to be such a nasty, horrible thing because it's not supporting their points of view. That's obviously what it is. They're not supporting the Donald Trump side, therefore, and it's against them. Therefore, obviously, they gotta start acting like a seven-year-old with anger issues and start stamping their feet and throwing temper tantrums, whining and complaining about it, and all that crap. Um, around nine o'clock last night, I believe it was, there was um, a pro-Trump supporter that got really mad at the people for laughing, smiling, and protesting. Donald Trump. And while, by the way, while these people are laughing, smiling, not all of them, but a large majority of them, they're still, they're still, you know, making their voices heard. They're still doing exactly what they're intending to do with these protests, um, which is obviously to make their voice heard and say exactly why they're protesting what they want. The around nine o'clock-ish last night, um, I it was still on the Hawthorne Bridge. There was, uh, there was. A pro-Trump supporter that apparently showed up to where they were going to start marching eastward towards the east side of the bridge, and the, this is the not my president's uh, protesters that they they came up came up against, and this stupid pro the stupid um, ant or uh, pro-Trump supporter decided they're going to pour a bunch of slick, super slippery, dangerous liquids all over in front of them right as they were stepping their feet there, and so apparently. That caused a f very small few, it was like two or three, I think, people of the, the anti-Trump protest to get pissed off at the person, and they lost their cool temporarily, and they broke into a bit of a squabble and a little bit of a fight, but it was super minor. It wasn't, like, major. But, and it makes sense to me, because that is a dangerous thing to do, to try and injure people just because you happen to not support the fact that they're protesting something that you you do support, you know, so it's technically a protest against what you're supporting. There's no reason to go out and be a stupid and mature idiot and go out and pick a fight or go out and get violent or go out and decide to say, hey, I'm going to start trying to injure people and stop them by pouring slippery liquids in front of somebody and trying to break somebody's hip. It's stupid, but anyway, that was around 9 o'clock last night. Apparently, never turned into anything major, which is predictable, specifically because the anti-Trump protesters... They're not my president protesters, they regained their cool pretty quickly and just decided they're going to ignore the person and just alert everybody else that they happen to pour slippery liquids and they're going to try and offend you. They just don't react, basically. Ignore them. Which was successful after that. Anyway, about uh, somewhere between 11 and 12 last night, apparently um, they ended up, the uh, main group of the not my, not my president protesters, the anti-Trump protesters, they ended up in the Pearl District, which is northwest Portland, I think it was around 23rd Avenue in Broadway area, 
And so that's basically, I think, right around the bridge. And, um... The Broadway bridge, obviously. And... Um... They happen to stumble into another protester group. Though this one is self-proclaimed anarchists. They are not anarchists. They're just pissed off people that all they want to do is cause chaos and just unleash their rage. They're pissed off people. I can understand being pissed off, obviously. But to the extent to go out and lose your maturity and lose your cool and just go out and start rip-roaring through an entire car dealership and bus stops and all these other things because you got pissed. What the hell? You know, and I want to clarify, not one single Trump support, or uh, not my president protester, so anti-Trump protester, got involved in any of the vandalism or any of the violence. There was a few people that got a little bit angsty between each other, that is on the not my president side, and then almost the entirety of the anarchist group, which was about 4,000, the Portland Police Bureau predicted, um, people. That's a lot of people, especially considering there's probably around that much, if not more, on the uh, not my Trump protester side, you know, uh, got pissed. Almost the entire quote unquote anarchist group, which is not anarchists, got pissed. They're just self-proclaimed anarchists, they are not human anarchists. But anyway, they uh, got super enraged and super angsty and pissed because of the fact that they demanded that they, not my Trump supporters, bind with them together to form one group. They, not my Trump protesters, pretty much unanimously said, now we're good, you can just keep protesting whatever you're protesting, that's not the point of ours. And they immediately erupted in absolute rage and pissed, got super enraged and pissed off because their demand wasn't met which was, you have to bind with us. And so they started ripping through the car dealership that happened to be there, and bus stops that happened to be there, obviously. Trimet bus stops. Technically, I don't necessarily mind Trimet bus stops. <laughs> anyway. But, <laughs> but, uh, it's still really cool. But at the same time, it's just, I hate Trimet, so, like most people know. But anyway, um, so, they're rip they rip forward through the car dealerships there, and it's a Toyota dealership, and it's basically 23rd and Broadway area, so I assume that's most likely the Broadway Toyota dealership. I'm not entirely sure, but I am assuming it is, even though assumptions are never okay, but, you know, um, is what I assume it would be, though. It makes the most sense to me, but anyway, some massive big Toyota dealership, and I really do want to say, I'm so tempted to say it's the Broadway one, um, but anyway, and they rip through that. I mean, they really just vandalized the crap out of it. Um, in fact, I forgot to do one more thing, which is actually start my uh, watch my game capture software I want to use so I can go and record uh, capture Google right now, Google Chrome, because the fact that I have multiple things that I would like to uh, give it as Jesus Christ, examples. Um, so basically, this is a picture that they got of some of the anarchists that were in the car dealership and they were going and vandalizing all these brand new cars in this dealership lot. And they were just rip roaring through the entire thing. Um, so there's loads of cars that just got mullered by baseball bats of all different sorts and planks and just whatever these people had that they wanted to use f for such violence. And, um, there's various videos that I haven't watched. But the fact that these say anti-Trump -pro protests, that's incorrect, technically. Which Mike Bivens is actually a really good person to look at. But it's not actually the anti-Trump protesters that were doing this, though. This is, um... God damn it, the anarchist group that they're claiming are anarchists, but they're not anarchists. And I will get to that. But, nevertheless. So yeah, of course they had to end up using their Portland Police Bureau, had to, Portland Police Bureau, if I could speak English, ended up having to use their stun grenades and their rubber bullets and all that stuff because of, um, you know, all that. Um, another video, of course. Um, yeah, and they also end up smashing some store windows, too. Um, which is always nice. So you can tell the one running right there is obviously one of the self-proclaimed anarchist groups. And, um, 
I'm just going to mention, I found it kind of funny that this is part of the anarchist, quote-unquote, anarchist group. He has a Catholic cross on him. I thought that was pretty comedic. But, um, when you get down, the Cascadia one, by the way, the Cascadia flag, that's not part of the anarchist group. That is part of the, uh, anti-Trump protesters. But this one, you can tell, is definitely a anarchist one. Because... You can see multiple people doing various things like drinking tons of alcohol straight up. So it's it, it's just automatic. You can safely profile that and say, yeah, that's it. Same with this one. But the thing is, is that they're just a bunch of angsty people. Again, I can personally, you know, understand the extreme angst and stuff that you have built up and pent up friction and rage in you, but to get let yourself get stoop, stoop to the level of actually vandalizing things is not okay and the thing is is that there's probably so many more I can find but the thing is is that I personally am an actual anarchist but I always like to say I'm an anarchist by definition not by perception although today when I look up in dictionary.com both anarchy and anarchists now have the false perceptions that the world seems to just demand is the actual definition of anarchy and anarchist, which it's not, in the description, in the definitions now, which is really sad that it's made it into the definitions book, because they weren't there before. This was within the last, like, five years or so they've added them, which is really sad, because that means that the perception, the false perception is now starting to take over the actual definitions. Now, anarchy, the first one you see here, is a state without the state of society without government or law. Technically, the literal definition that it always has had since it was created, which apparently was in the late 1600s to 1500s region, um, anarchy was 1500s and obviously, and then the late 1600s was anarchist. But um, the thing is, is that it technically is a state of society or a world without government, rule, or authority not just government or law, although technically that's what that stands for, plus police and things like that, technically. It's to have no rule, no authority, no government. That is the technical definition of anarchy, and thus, as logic would go, if you go to anarchist, that technically is the same thing. It basically just means that you advocate, believe in, support, um, want or actually act for that to happen. But for it to actually be chaotic and violent, which is now the stupid false perceptions, which have been there now for so long, is part of the definitions now too, which is really sad. And I really hope it doesn't drown out the actual definitions, because I am by definition, and that is the first one of each of these you can find on dictionary.com. That is a, a true anarchist, and that is technically what I am, because I believe in it. I would have a kit for it, and I would want it. And I do want it, and I feel like we need it. But no, I don't actually act for it personally. I would not want to do that, because I don't really want to be involved in that, because I know that a lot of times that does turn violent, and also it technically does force you to be, in certain times and certain aspects, political, which I really want to avoid politics as best as possible. But... Anyway, so that's basically that. This is actually the true definition of anarchist. And then, of course, anarchy, like we saw, is this is the true definition of it. Just the number one and the number one. That's literally what the actual definition is. So when I say, by definition, not perception, that's what I mean. Is that the actual definitions, which are the first ones listed on dictionary.com, at least at current time, hopefully it doesn't get drowned out. Now, the perception is the rest of what you see in it, which is the supposed disorder and... Uh, chaos and turmoil and violence and all that other stuff, which is not what anarchy actually is. It's just what it's perceived as. So, anyway. So basically, that's why these people are not actually anarchists. They're just people that want to incite that violence and that chaos and let their rage vent out that way. And let their violence do the talking instead of their actual words and, act and uh, other actions that are not violent. But Anyway, so to clarify again, it wasn't actually the anti-Trump protesters or the um, 
also known as the Not My President protesters in Portland, that were the violence inciters last night. This was, and they still have never done any violent things. This is the anarchist group that is doing that. The self-proclaimed anarchist group, which really, they should be called <laughs> the, the Chaotic Rage Fest 2016 group, is what they should call themselves, really. But, you know, yeah. So personally, again, as you keep saying, I can understand the rage and I can understand the angst and the being pissed off and all that, but it's never okay to let yourself go down that far to actually go and do that. But yeah, so basically they just tore through bus stops and they tore through the dealership there on 23rd and Broadway and the Pearl. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so protests are going to continue tonight. It's all arranged, of course, and the ones that are actually announced and arranged are specifically the not my president slash anti-Trump protesters. And again, this whole anti-Trump protest thing really needs to be changed because it is not the anti-Trump protesters, it is the quote-unquote self-proclaimed anarchist protesters. Maybe the anarchists think that they should be called anti-Trump protesters because obviously these people also don't like the fact that Donald Trump is the elect, but they still shouldn't be considered that. Technically, they're quote-unquote anarchists, so they should be called, at least be called, self-proclaimed anarchist group. Is the one that's doing it, because they're not actually anarchists, but most specifically, they're not, they need to def make that definition and that defining boundary between the two groups. They're completely different, they're not the same. They refused to bind last night, which is for the big reason why this happened last night, was all this violence. But... Overall, it wasn't very widespread. It was just really to that area, to that specific group, and therefore it was technically mild, because they could have gone all over the place. But they stayed within that region of the Pearl. So, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, now, another thing is, is that so many Donald Trump protesters, so, so many of them, they're... God damn it, they're so aggravating because they go out and they decide that they want to, you know, um, they want to basically just rip or rant, like I said in the beginning, they want to be, get all bitchy and want to complain about the fact, it's like, hey, why are you, why are you protesting? That's not okay. That's selfish. That's this, that's that, that's disgusting, that's horrible, you know? You know, and you wonder why supposedly you know Donald won. It's like, I'm sorry. Why is it that simply protesting, let alone it's peaceful protest to where people are actually enjoying themselves most for the most part. You know, they're laughing and smiling a lot of them. Seriously, why 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 are you so angsty about it? Why are you so bitchy about it? Technically. There's a whole entire feed of Donald Trump that's well documented across the internet, all over the place. If you Google it, you can find the entire thing. If you look on his page, you can find it. If you look on other people's pages that have shared it on Twitter, you can find it. You can probably find it all over Facebook or even YouTube, anywhere else. 2012, and even before that, and even this year, technically, he was encouraging protests. For the most part, Two of the times, 2012, and even once this year, he was encouraging a violent protest, a.k.a. riots, and actually an all-out violent revolutionary war. He didn't want a peaceful revolution, like they say these anti-Trump protesters want, which is fully peaceful, at least here in Portland that's what we want, which is very Portland of us. Admittedly, it's very Oregonian and Cascadian, but anyway. You know, they, he wanted to incite that. He felt like it would make a good statement. Of course, he's a he's a British idiot, so naturally he probably that's probably why he feels like violence is always a good thing if he doesn't get what he wants, right? Temper tantrums because he's a tour asshole. Personal belief, at least, and a lot of people share the sentiments. A lot of people don't. There you go. But anyway, it, it it's kind of I just think it's so ridiculous that you actually get mad about it. Like, who cares? And, you know, a lot of these people and their supposed quote-unquote defense, it's so incredibly immature, even more immature than before, because they just keep going more and more immature, where their argument is, well, they're in I-84, they're in I-5, they're on the streets, they're keeping people from being able to go home. 
One, that's called intelligent protesting, by the way. Very intelligent, because guess what? Your complaints actually is exactly what validates that kind of protesting. It's be they do that because they know that's where all the attention and people are going to funnel to, to get wherever they're going, all over the city and all over the metro area. Duh! Of course they're going to do that. Because Portlanders are highly intelligent and aware. They know that that's what you need to do. The protest against the new police contract and... Uh, Charlie Hales and the way Portland was dealing with things. They took the entire street in front of Charlie Hales' house, the mayor's house, and thus forced him to stay inside. He couldn't get any of his lackeys to get him out. He was stuck to listen to every single protester and what they had to say. He had to hear what the people had to say and what they thought against his own will he could not do anything he had to sit there and go through it and listen to it I don't care if he ignored it we know that even if you ignore it no matter how much you ignore it your mind still gonna it's still gonna go through your audio in your head through your ears and it's gonna go into your head and it's gonna go into the storage basin so at some point you're gonna hear the echoes you're no no matter how much you ignore it and think you're not gonna you know you're not gonna hear people you're gonna hear them you're gonna listen to them, whether you like it or not. That's how intelligent they are. They blockade streets, they blockade the exit and entrance into the mayor's house because of the fact they're intelligent enough to know this is what we need to do to focus the attention on the issues that we're trying to get solved, if not compromised on. That's basically why they always take to the transit corridor. Now, TriMet released a thing saying to the protesters, hey, don't, you know, don't stop leaving. Okay. Don't, don't the, you know, don't go plugging up the traffic, but specifically, don't plug up the transit corridor because most people in the Portland Metro rely on it. Well, no duh, but their redundancy in that is the fact that they are ignoring the fact that almost on the entirety of all the protesters, including the San Andreas group, almost the entirety of them, rely so heavily, if not completely, on using tramets to get back home or get to wherever they're going. That's the redundancy in it. That's why they're doing it. That's why they plug it. It's because they know how desperately people rely on tramet. Even though trimeth, trimes, whatever you want to call it, Try hell. Good too. Seriously, TriMet is arguably the most unreliable pile of garbage ever, especially when it comes to buses, which is what almost everybody uses and wants. Of course, they ignore it and they go to Max, but it's a completely different story. Anyway, the point is, is almost the entirety of the protesters, they almost completely, if not literally, entirely rely on TriMet to get back home or to get to wherever they're going, to get to their work, to get to their school, to get to wherever. So it's it's redundant because it uses, they have that knowledge to know that not only them, but so many others rely on it. So go, they're going to plug the transit corridor. Not the entire time, the anti-Trump supporters this is, you know, the not my president uh, protesters that is, but, you know, they they keep going back to the transit corridor and replug it. The uh, Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter groups, the Don't Shoot PDX groups, they also love to do that. While they're big enough to where they can spread around, kind of L around streets to where they can even impact the city hall area and the courthouse and all these other places simultaneously, thus forcing the attention onto their issues that they're trying to voice their opinions on and make sure that they get heard. And hopefully, they can get people to think about it, if not know that this is that big of a problem, if not even further steps be taken, like say, hey, okay, you know I understand, that's actually a good point, we should support this, you know? It's called intelligent protesting. It's not called unintelligent protesting. And, yeah, the thing is, is with intelligent protesting, that's going to happen. And that's going to piss off a lot of other people, because people want to get home that are involved. But, at the same time, it makes perfect sense. There's a lot of people in Portland that got stuck in the I-84 backup and shut down because of the fact of the protest the other night. Most of them weren't complaining at all. They said... Because this is so Portland, and because they're doing it peacefully, and they're showing the world how to do protests properly, 
which they really are, they, the uh, Not My President protesters, and, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter stuff when they're up and all that, they're, um, it's just incredible because people that were stuck there, even for like an hour straight, sitting in the same spot in their car trying to get home from work, they really, they didn't really complain all that much, if at all. Like a lot of them complimented and thought, you know, I don't necessarily mind this. I'm actually having a good time watching this. And uh, some of them even said, you know what? Instead of complaining, I might as well join them because, I mean, what's more Portland than that, you know? It's like, and I'm going to be stuck here for a long time, so I might as well join the group that's causing me to be stuck, right? It's just, it's, the community here is still so damn supportive, even with the, personally, I believe, quote unquote, pollution with LA former LA residents and former Miami and New York City and Chicago and Dallas residents. Ugh. I could go into the whole statistical thing that the police and the state department and all that stuff have that LA people that moved here technically have this almost entirely the sole reason why the crime rate in Oregon skyrocketed and specifically the moderate to violent and critical, you know, major crimes went through the roof once suddenly that the influx from LA started happening, technically, statistically, it almost entirely points, hey, LA residents that just moved up here, you're Oregon. You know, you're, you're screwing up Oregon, like, stuck shoving this up our asses. Thank you, we appreciate it. Uh, reminds me of the day Tom McCall beat around the bush to basically say, we don't want Californians here. <laughs> anyway, I have to be snide, but still, anyway, it's again a different story, but, um... I did make myself lose track of where I was going with that, but point in hand here is the anarchist group is not actually anarchists. They're just people that are want to unleash their rage in the most violent and chaotic ways, apparently. Especially if they don't get their ways. And then the anti-Trump protesters, aka the Not My President protesters in Portland, are not at all violent. They're not at all chaotic. They don't. They weren't involved in any of this last night, and they haven't been involved in anything violent at all. The closest to quote unquote violence and evil things that they've done is like two or three of them apparently here and there. Specifically, the most notable one was on the uh, western side of the Burnside Bridge on a pylon. They wrote "F Trump" on it three times. That's as are evil, supposedly, as they went. And that's not even bad. Um, and I don't think anybody's burned any U.S. flags in this anti-Trump protest here in Portland yet, at least. But I know that elsewhere in the country, the people have been burning flags. People have been getting so pissed at that. And I've never understood why people are so damn enraged and hurt by the fact that people burn a flag. It's just a flag. It's just a piece of useless cloth that happens to have toxic dyes in it. That's all it is. It's just cloth in the end. And people just have the biggest heart attacks and hissy fits about somebody burning the piece of cloth known as a flag. Who cares? They make so many that they can't even sell enough. And you're still shitting your pants about the fact and they're giving yourself heart attacks and aneurysms about the fact, why are you burning a flag? Who cares? That's not chaotic. That's not violent. It's not even illegal. Technically, the U.S. has an entire day dedicated to burning U.S. flags. Now, technically, that is more of an armed forces thing. Yes, but it's, I think, to pay respects to fallen soldiers or something, but nevertheless, it's... Still, the point is that it's just a piece of cloth in the end. I don't understand why people are so angsty, ragey about it. If it's literally just symbolism, symbolism's just air. Symbolism, personally, at least to me, it's just air. It doesn't exist. It doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's literally, symbolism is a feeling that somebody has that they put so much time, effort, and other feeling and focus into that they act like that's the most valuable thing in the entire existence of the world. Is symbolism. It doesn't even freaking exist. It's technically a figment of your imagination, man. I mean, it's a it's a fig it's a false way of validating yourself and 
figurative things like a country and stuff. I mean, and validating your beliefs by this uh, strong feeling of zeal that is termed symbolism, basically, in something. It's so bizarre. I don't understand it. I, I guess technically one could argue it's kind of related to uh, totemism. Except they're not, like, they were never that zealous to it. There's like, I'm gonna rip you apart if you don't start believing what I do. Because they're, most native people were never that way. That's kind of uh, exclusively an entitled U.S. American kind of way of life. <laughs> but anyway, you know. It's ridiculous. But I think that people personally should start looking at what these anti-Trump protests in Portland and what which are also known as not my, not my president protesters they just are looking at it for what it really is and what they're really doing which is literally having a good time stating why they're there protesting in the first place and remaining peaceful no matter how frictional things get not really violating or vandalizing or doing anything. Really, none of them have done anything at all. So people should learn to, I think, protest correctly, which is exactly what this group has been doing in Portland. They've been, without realizing it, I think, showing the world that's how you properly protest, you know? Let alone that you're plugging traffic corridors. Technically, that is a highly intelligent way to protest and get your voice heard and your points made. You know, it forces action. That's kind of how it works. You know, it's that's why technically in wars you take out economic centers, you take out other things, quote unquote strategic points of emphasis because of the fact that it causes a stall, if not a complete stoppage of a giant portion of a country's, or in this case uh politicians uh, direction basically and it, it forces them to stop and they have to do something about it they have to acknowledge it at least and commit to doing at least some of the things that these protesters are demanding that's technically what protests are all about and the more supporters you can get and the more you are the quote unquote squeaky wheel that gets the grease you might just get that grease, which means you might just get exactly what you've been working for. And to do it in such a peaceful manner, with such friction and hatred coming at you, and all that, it really says something about the quality of people we have here in the Portland metro area of Oregon. And I love it. It makes me super proud and happy to see it, you know. I have to be sarcastic and take jabs at the pro-Trump supporters around here because the fact that they just are, they whine and complain and bitch, squeal and squawk and stamp their feet like little angsty four-year-olds or seven-year-olds with anger issues, you know, so much because they happen to be protesting and then they get even more bitchy because of the fact that they see people smiling and laughing while they're protesting, in other words, they're peaceful and they're enjoying themselves while they happen to also be making the voices heard. Apparently, in their mind, that's logically what you're supposed to do, apparently. I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, so basically, there needs to be a defining line between the two. I hope I can, I hope that I gave some clarification. Um, and that also giving clarification on the fact that the anarchist group is self-proclaimed. It's not actually an anarchist group at all. They literally just want to unleash their rage, and they figure, since that's the perception of anarchy, why not call yourself that, right? Even though that's not the definition of it. Technically. Technical definition is what I had already showed earlier in the video. But, you know, just things like that, and that people need to take an example for what the not my president protesters slash anti-Trump protesters really are, and what they really are stand for, what they really are doing here in the Portland Metro. Last thing I want to mention is the fact that yesterday morning, I believe it was, if not the morning before, I can't remember, um, no, it was the morning before because it was the ninth, because it was just after the, he was elected the night before, uh, the first day of the protest, 
Um, Oregon successfully got a session ballot measure submitted and accepted to seed from the union. And it was written well enough that it leaves room to be able to legally let Washington State and even British Columbia of Canada, if they really wanted to, join Oregon and form Cascadia in a session. Basically, they can just say, okay, we want to join up. And that would be really awesome to see that happen, actually, because Cascadia is not just a bioregion and a massive economic region, it's actually a cultural region as well, and an ecological region, which is why it's called a bioregion. But, and it's a, a cultural region in the sense that, not everybody obviously, but a large majority of the people in the Cascadian region are very similar in the way they live life and the way their culture is and the way they treat others and their philosophies and everything. But it's so vastly different than the rest of the United States people. It's so vastly different than even the rest of Canada. And it's so weird because people come up here and they think it's really bizarre. It's not just the centricness of us, but it's the fact that they think... It's just the culture shock almost people get. I mean, people can come from especially the Southeast, the Deep South, which is polar opposite culturally and even ideology-wise down to religion and pol political standpoints. They come up here and they're like, I want to go back home because they realize this is the opposite of being comfortable. This is not what I call home. This is the opposite. This is like hell to us because it's so opposite. Or some of them, they're just in complete shock because they're like, no way this is in the U.S. No way this is only a few thousand miles away. And it is, you know, it's just, we're just so outcasted of without even attempt, without an attempt, without outcasting ourselves, without them outcast, outcasting us, we were already that way. So it would be super cool to see that happen. And technically, economically, Oregon itself, let alone the rest of the region, especially if you include BC, which is a huge economic center of Canada, and then um, Washington, which is decent economy as well, you throw those three together, California and Texas, if they were alone, actually wouldn't necessarily compare to us in terms of stability-wise economically. And it's pretty funny how that works. However, I do technically, this is going on a different subject now, but I technically see uh, Portland maybe possibly ending up like Detroit, just in the sense that they have that same singular focus, like forestry and a little bit of agriculture. Yeah. They technically now have their tech sector, but... And, yeah, it's rapidly growing, so they, they get a big tech sector. That's two focuses. But, technically, it's one economic... It's one whole economic focus. They really, because of the import-export system, they really need to focus on making themselves locally even more economically stable than they were before. And they, the rest of this region does, too. But, I mean, just in general, that. And then they need to find some other economic standpoint focuses, focal points that they want to start utilizing in order to keep themselves afloat, because if you have one, even if there's multi-facets inside of it, just one little economic focus, like Detroit had, they have multiple little facets inside of their one economic focus, but because of their one economic focus, when that one single focus, focal point, that industry happened to start sliding, the entire city went with it, and so they crashed, just like all the companies did there. That they that was their focal point. So technically, Portland's in that same exact kind of focal point situation economically. They really need to fix themselves and find more focal points economically if they really don't want to have risk being like Detroit, Michigan. Technically, but anyway, that's enough of that because now I'm just going on to subject to subject to subject because I'm attention deficit and this is only the slightest connection. But yeah, so they Oregon submitted a session. It's technically for ourselves, but again, Washington, D.C. can join up if they want to. It legally was written in a good enough manner that legally, if Washington wants to join us, the government can't necessarily say no. 
they don't necessarily have to say yes, but they can't necessarily say no. I'm sure they have a billion loopholes for what would otherwise be a successful session. But, so they can uh, say, no, we're going to keep you. Screw you. Because that's the U.S. federal government in a nutshell. Everything has a loophole. And by everything has a loophole, I mean everything has, you know, only a few million loopholes that anything, especially elitist and corporate giants can jump through. How wonderful. Anyway. Yeah, so that's that. So, uh, hope you get the gist of this. This is really long ass. As I figured it would be at least 30 minutes. It's probably going to be around that. Maybe 45. Sorry about that. It was that long. But, if you survived it and got this far, good for you, I guess. Um, this was supposed to be kind of like a newscast-ish, uh, economic, a podcast-ish, vlog-ish sort of a thing. I just really wanted to talk about it. But yeah, so, instead of being like these douchebags here and randomly inciting your rage and letting it bust into being violent and what we need to do is start actually acting like the mature, intelligent, caring, intuitive human beings that we so desperately demand we are, instead we started acting like it, and actually start setting aside each other's differences permanently, knowing that no matter what, those differences ain't gonna disappear. And start spreading, you know, building up our own personal positivity, thus helping each other build up each other's pos- uh, English positivity as well, and then start spreading it. Because even if you can't see that positivity as you spread it around, you can't see the effects it's having, it's there. And it has a massive effect, and it's always going to be exponential. And even the most negative of people, like these people... Yeah, no doubt they're going to end up being affected by it to the extent that they very likely will slowly start to feel, if not notice, that they're changing to be more positive. They be hippie magic bullshit to people. But, and everything is energy, and in the end, we really need to start spreading more positivity and start acting like the human beings we say we are, rather than showing we're not at all that way. So... Well, the many we are. God, humanity is really mind fucking to me. <laughs> so stay safe, stay fluffy, have a great day night wherever you are. Spread that positivity and give yourself a hug if nobody else is willing to give you it, because I think everybody's gonna need pretty freaking hugs, honestly, because hugs help so much. But anyway, and uh, yeah! Hope to see you later, and hopefully things don't explode into much worse situations. Hopefully people will choose to stop being so reactionary and start embracing a positive, more positive set of mindsets and self-control. So yeah. Bye-bye, everybody.